real cases before a real judge. Plaintiff Abel DePini says he grew up in a rough neighborhood in Chicago, and he joined a gang at a young age. Abel claims after he went to prison for four years for drug trafficking, he decided he wanted to be a role model for the defendant, who is his brother. However, he's suing him today for an unpaid loan. Defendant Hector Laureano says he was raised in Puerto Rico and only met Abel when he moved to Chicago and their relationship had a bumpy start. Although Hector admits that he got money from Abel, he says he never agreed to repay it. Start with you. Sir, um, I'm native from here from Chicago. Grew up in Chicago, Humble Park area. So uh, anybody familiar with Humble Park, it's a really rough area. Uh, joined gang, young age, winded up getting incarcerated, winded up doing uh, four years for drug four. trafficking. How much drugs? Um, was it um, over more than just one bust or a conspiracy for over the, a certain period of time? It was a conspiracy over a certain period of time. Why well, you only get four years? Had a good lawyer. All right. I wound up taking uh, the four mm -hmm. years, wound up going downstate for the four years, came back home with the help of my parents, my mom, biggest help, you know, rest in peace. Uh, she helped me a lot. Wound up getting my life together, Good. taking care of my kids, taking care of my family, working a nine to five job, Good. like any normal citizen. How long ago was that? I've been, I've been free mm -hmm. for about Three and a half years. Good. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. That. So when I got home, got everything straightened out, um, trying to set a good example to here, my brother. Um, he winded up. We winded up kicking it one day, talking, and he was telling me how he um trying to get his life together also, and he you know he needed some money, and I asked him what was the money for. And he told me he wanted to get an apartment for him and his kids. So, of course, I said, you know, um, how much you need? I said, I'll, I'll give you the money if you use it for that reason and that reason only. And if you don't, then <laughs> I, I want my money back. All right, let me get some background from him before we get to the specifics okay. on the loan. You want to give me some background on yourself, sir? Well, yeah, me, I'm, I'm from... Puerto Rico. I was raised in Puerto Rico. Then I moved to Chicago. Well, you know, me and my brother, we had a checkered beginning. But we grew up and we got to knowing each other, you know. Uh, what have you done since that time? You educate yourself at all? What, what's oh, that? yeah. I've, I've educated myself. I've uh, started up my own business. I uh, detail boats during the summer. Good. So Excellent. I'm trying to, like, that's a fix good my, business. I'm trying to fix my past because I did have a rough past too. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to be like my brother in certain aspects, and that wasn't a good idea. Yeah. But you know, yep. it happens. You know, everybody mm -hmm. everybody messes up. And well, the good news is you turn it around, and boat detailing is a good business. You can probably get a thousand dollars a boat, nearly yeah. five six hundred dollars a boat to to uh, do those. But unless I got robbed by my <laughs> unless my guy robbed me, doesn't cost that much. <laughs> <laughs> for a five foot boat? Uh, <laughs> it's no, 12, like $12 a foot. Huh? I charge $12 a foot. Okay, so what? That should have been $60. <laughs> 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 All right, so how does he, um, he owe you again for the loan? Well, he came and approached me and asked me if, um, if I could um, borrow him the $1,500 for an apartment. And I told him I would give it to him as long as he uses it for the apartment. They, there was no need for him to pay me back. But um, down the line, my, my girlfriend wound up going out with mutual friends of ours, and they were saying how my brother was making it rain, basically. <laughs> so I'm like, OK. At the club, throwing up money yeah. from the strippers. <laughs> So I'm like, wow, okay. So um, I wound up confronting him about it. And I said, I hope you didn't make it rain with the money I gave you. So he's like, um, you know, he's like, mom, bro. I said, did you get your apartment already? He tells me no. I said, oh, okay. Um, so what's, what's going on with that? 
he kept on beating around the bush with it. So I told him, well, eventually, if you didn't get the apartment, I need my money back. All right, let me give you some advice. Never give them cash when they come to you for something like that. Yeah, I learned my lesson Pay the now. landlord directly. Write the check to the landlord. Write the money order, the cashier's check to the landlord, or go down there and you pay them. If it's their bill, I need to pay my so-and-so, it's about to be turned off. You send the money, you write the check to them. If it's for the house note, and they're about to be put out, you write the check to the mortgage company. From you, they'll take, they don't care who it comes from as long as it's good. Of course. And so that's my advice because they might go and throw it up. A young man, how old are you? 25. Oh yeah, you know, you gave him $1,500, <laughs> he went sh straight to the strip club. <laughs> he said he'll sleep on the floor. Oh, yeah, but sure he gonna will. throw that 1500 up tonight, Doc. <laughs> the defendant. Go ahead, what happened? Well, he did borrow me the money, but there was no agreement in which I had to pay him back. You know, he, he never told me a set time, date, or when, so I just took the money. After he gave it to you and you changed the purpose, that's what he said, you gotta pay him back? Yeah. Like, it was never told to me that what the money was for. He's like, here, so you could get on your feet. I, you know, in his eyes, it looked like it was for an okay. apartment, but in my You're eyes... standing on your yeah. feet in the club. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> Stand, get on your feet. Keep your honor. Stand up, clap, and then throw your money up. That's right, you did what he said. Go stand on, get on your feet. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, um... Why did you pop the money off? What did you do with it? Well, a little bit went in towards my business, and the rest of it, well, you know, I got three kids, so... It was $100. So <laughs> <laughs> right. The rest of it went towards the kids, you know, buying formula and baby milk and stuff is... You agreed to repay him afterwards, after he approached you about it? Well, I don't, I don't remember the situation actually, like, me saying, yeah, I'm gonna pay you back. I just remember him borrowing me the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. That's typically, that's typically the case. I got statements here. You have a statement? All right. Witness so statements, you Your Honor. that part, how you remember his borrowing it. <laughs> I just remember when he borrowed me the money, that's it. This is from who? Who is that's she? That's from my girlfriend. Like she's gonna tell me anything different. Who is Denise? Denise is, um, mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> right, she sounds a little reliable. I've witnessed on many occasions Hector say he knows he owes Abel the fifteen hundred and he will pay him. This has been going on since two thousand fourteen. We have two witnesses say they heard you say you pay him. You remember now? Oh. <laughs> Pay your brother and stop popping off your money. I know at 25, you're not a good money manager, but you don't have long before you're going to have to be a good money manager. How old are your three children? Uh, five, three, and one. All right, so those expenses are going to be higher, get higher by the year. So you better learn how to manage your money a lot better. Judging for the plane of good luck to both of you, gentlemen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He's still my brother, you know. I still got love for him. I'll still be there. But I know I won't give him no more money. He ain't gonna go make it rain in, in the strip club on, in my wallet. <laughs> well, I tried to pay him back, so I had to go this far. But hey, I'm young, dumb, and what can I say? I'm sorry. Plaintiff Hayden Hathaway says he has known the defendant for a year, and Hayden claims he is a compulsive liar. Hayden says the defendant lies about everything, from jobs to women to cars and he's suing him today for a loan and emotional distress. Defendant Chad Horton insists he does have a nice car and claims he never told Hayden anything about any women. Chad says Hayden is a hothead who not only threatened him, but who also threatened his parents. Therefore, he refuses to pay him anything. Start with you. Basically, Your Honor, this dude is just a compulsive liar. Um, I've known him for about a year and the more I got to know him, the more I realized that he uh, just lied about everything he told me. He, uh, he would say he had all these cars, he would say he had uh, jobs before, that he made all this money, he said he dated all these girls, and i just never seen it. Uh, never seen the cars, never seen the women, never seen the jobs. <laughs> I mean, How long did it take you to figure out that he uh, didn't have any of those things? Not too long. Uh, he had nice things. For short periods of times, I mean, he had, he always had a nice watch, he always had a nice phone, 
Uh, he drove a nice car that I always wanted to drive, and he, but it's just everyone that knew him knew that he wouldn't tell you the truth. They would just figure out that he would lie to you about pretty much anything he could. All right, sir. Let's hear about these lies. He said you claim to have this and that and all these women, and the uh, girls never did show up. Well, I never did say anything about the girls. Okay. Uh, I did say stuff about cars, and I do still have the titles from said cars. All right. Uh, I don't have them with me today. What type of cars? Uh, eclipses, okay. mostly the second gens. Good. Uh, a couple first gens. All right. Uh, watches. Yeah, I always had nice watches. I've always been into nice watches. Good. The reason some of them come Doesn't out... Doesn't have one on I today. I do not have one. I did forget <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I did forget it at home. all your nice watches, <laughs> you decided today, I don't feel like well, I, don't, I don't need to know the time. <laughs> all right, go ahead. I was, I was running late. I'm, you know, leaving to get here. And... <laughs> The one thing I forget is actually I even pulled it out. It's out of its case, ready to get on, and I just... I, I got to the airport, and I'm like, no. Cause <laughs> that was... <laughs> I was, I, I even, I, I look, like, going through the security, I reached to my wrist, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Trying to find out where it was, whether I lost it in the All right, car. what about the girls? I never said anything about the girls. You never had a girl with all this fast cars and <laughs> expensive watches. I, I, I did have a few you girls, but I never up? bragged about them. Didn't need, didn't see the need to. Uh, just like the cars, never. You didn't see the need to because you never had them. You said, <laughs> "Hey, hey, <laughs> I, I, I get never that said, part. I, never said I, I can got think that through far. lies now. They may not know the difference, but I got the game too. Well, I, I, all I, right, I, let's hear about him. Why don't you tell me about him? He's very hot-headed. Uh, he seems like you know he's got to have the best of everything. He's he acts like the world owes him and not him owe the world. I don't think he owes really truly understands the value of a dollar. <laughs> I really don't. Why? So give not me a Because speech. when I first met him, he was driving a really nice Malibu. Now, he stated that his parents had bought it for him. Not true. Nice Malibu. Why do you doubt that? Because when, during everything, you know, my car broke down. Yes, I promised to pay him. Which one? Uh, the one that I currently drive. Um, okay, but you have two. I have one car. Oh, I thought you said you had a couple of eclipses. I, I used to. Oh, what happened to the other one? <laughs> well, <laughs> why you laughed? <laughs> Nothing. Hey, well, the first two, the two that I just mentioned, they mm -hmm. were all rotted, rusted. Mm -hmm. I had purchased one that had no rust and was good. So I took the good out of the two, made one good car. Okay, and one good car. Wasn't Ended good up. after all because it broke down. Yes. <laughs> you forgot that part. Yes. I told the car you, broke man, down. I see through that. And Why don't you come on and stop? <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> A little short con, man. I cut right through that very quickly. Yeah, I, I traded in the two to get it brand new. You just forgot you told me that was the one that broke down. So how does he owe you? The loan and the emotional distress. Um, on the 30th of March, 2015, I was at his place of work, which was the local vapor shop. You know, they sell e-cigarettes and whatnot. That's become a big thing nowadays. The e-cigarettes, you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, I told him I was going to a different vapor shop that had a special one that I was going to buy. And he asked me to pick up a, a specialty item they had that no one else had for him, lent him the money for it. He said he was going to pay me back the next week because he was getting his taxes in. And this was all around tax time, so I thought, you know, hey, Give everyone a chance. <laughs> Give everyone Should've a chance. Should have watched my show. You would know you're yeah. not going to get your money at tax time. Anybody tells you that? <laughs> Particularly a con man, like you said he was. Well, I like to give everybody a chance. You know, okay. you never know until you you never know see when if he's good on his word. See if he's around. actually good That's on right. his word. Go ahead. You know? So, plus he said he was going to give me $50 on top of whatever I spent. So I said, I thought about it, and I said, well, let me drive your car there. He thought about it. He said, yeah, yeah, you can drive my car there. So he told me the total was only going to be about $200. I get there, the total turns out to be $323. I call him up on the phone, tell him, listen, your total is $323, plus the $50 what you're going to owe me interest. He said, no, that's good, man. I got you. So uh, I bought it for him. He said he was going to pay me the next Friday. Next Friday, rolled around, no money. Um, so I wrote up a note with him. He signed this promissory note that he was going to pay me. 
He only paid me $30. The emotional distress is for what? Um, multiple times I'd have to drive to his place of work. To uh, His phone got shut off, so I couldn't contact him. Um, you better leave that part alone when going to this man's work to collect money. All right, let's... And he tried having, getting me jumped one time. All right, there you go. How how um, you describe that? He told me to meet him at his house one of the days just to meet him so we could square up, get my money. Uh, I go there with my friend, sitting outside, bang on the door, no one answers. Bang on the door again, no one answers. Uh, it turns out he was in there sleeping until 5 in the afternoon, 4 in the afternoon. Uh, sit in my truck, his brother comes home. His brother tells me, I'm going to go try to wake him up. I, I don't know if he got up or not. Mm -hmm. But two kids come out of their house down the street, putting their hands up. Uh, what did he do, sir? He was inside. He was still inside. All right. The well, two kids came up to anything. us. Well, I'm assuming he was the one that contacted it's the kids. Not enough to... to assume. Now, you're uh, alone, sir. I feel I don't owe him anything anymore. Why? Because multiple times he has threatened to have me jumped. Um, <laughs> not true. <laughs> to go to the police? He, he has threatened my parents, which I do have his witness statement for that. They go to the police. They did not go to the police. Why isn't anybody going to the police on this guy, all these <laughs> right. threats? Because they wanted me to do it. They wanted me to Why didn't it. you? Because I didn't want to settle it in court. I wanted to settle no, it. No, I'm not talking about now. court. I'm talking about the police. You don't have to settle it in court. The police, they go and pick him up, and they charge him with threats. Uh, that's your only defense. That's not a, a defense to a legal claim that you've signed an agreement for. So I'm going to grant him his judgment, $345. Next time someone threatens you, sir, go to the police and show that you have, uh, you're serious about it. Your emotional distress, sir, he was in the house. So you haven't proven to me that he is the one that caused these guys to come and intimidate you. In fact, you said he has a brother who could also have been the person to have these guys intimidate you. Judgment for the plaintiff and the amount of the law. Put your hand down. Have a good day. Uh, looks like I got to choose my friends more wisely. The reason I didn't go to the cops is because if I go to the cops, well, who says he doesn't call those guys? And if he doesn't contact them within a certain time, who says they don't come after me? Plaintiff Carol Blevins met the defendant in 2008 when she moved in across the street, and they became best friends. Carol claimed she and the defendant bonded over their love of Alabama football, and they often acted out together like Thelma and Louise. Carol's suing the defendant today for unpaid loans. Defendant Jamie Naples says she and Carol used to do everything together, like celebrating marriages, birthdays, and even learning the wobble together. However, Jamie's countersuing Carol for animal care. Start with you. Okay. First of all, Ms. Naple and I um, met in 2008. Um, she moved in a, across the street from me. We became best buddies and friends. Uh, we have a love of Alabama football, Roll Tide. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So do I. And Second uh, only to Michigan. Huh? <laughs> so second only to the University of Michigan. <laughs> second only. <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick would say that wasn't so. <laughs> but anyway, so um, we have uh, been a little bit naughty once in a while. Um, I would um, say that we're probably the Alabama Wild girls of Alabama? Wild, wild girls, well, no, I would say we're more like Thelma and Louise. <laughs> All right, that's wild. <laughs> well, in, in one particular time, um, my husband had decided to go over and, and um, go hang out with some buddies, and uh, he would like to drink and tear one on, so I called, and I saw he was about two sheets in the wind, and I said, oh, no, he can't drive home. So I called Cuz, and I said, hey, look, what's up? She said, I ain't doing nothing. I said, well, we on a mission. She said, what? And I said, I'm going to steal his car. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what they did. The Louise. So we went, so we went down and stole his car, you know, to being all thuggish and hiding around the corner and stuff and <laughs> run up into the thing. And about 15 minutes later, I come back and I called him and I said, hey, I said, you sound like you're pretty wasted. And he said, yeah, I'll be all right. I can make it home. And I said, well, you'll have to call me because your ride's gone. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get home? Just curious. <laughs> I, I went and got oh, him. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so um, it was just one of those type things that we just did everything together. And then um, 
after all of this, um, you know, this has just kind of put a big wedge between our friendship and stuff like that. No, hopefully it won't. Hopefully it won't continue. Hopefully we can resolve it today. Ma'am, you want to give me some background? Yes, Your Honor, I would. Uh, like she said, we have been friends for a long time. We've done everything together, celebrate birthdays, anniversaries. We even learned the wobble together. Wobble. <laughs> New Year's wobble. Eve party. Is that the Line more dance. mature version of, uh, what do they call it? Electric slide. No. <laughs> no. Twerking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a more true, yes, yes, That's the it's definitely. That's mature version of definitely, twerking. Definitely, definitely. All right. You should have seen the guys, though. Yeah, we, we, we had the whole bar going crazy because they were going, look at them fools. <laughs> but really, seriously, but this has put a wedge between us, and we need to get it resolved. Aren't you all, I heard somebody say cuss. We're, we're, we're cousins by marriage, and yes, uh, I've gone to um, her kids' um, bridal showers and, and or baby showers and stuff like that, yes. Tell me how she owes this loan. Well, um, in the last part of June of 2013, <coughs> um, her husband had just gotten out of the hospital. Danny had been in for a few days, and I called to see how she was doing, and she said, um, you know, he was doing okay, but he was gonna probably have to go back in. And then all of a sudden she just broke down. And I said, what's wrong? And she goes, oh, nothing. And I said, no, what's wrong? She said, I'm about ready to lose my house. So at that time I sat there and I said, well, you know, throw it upstairs, let the man handle it and it'll, it'll be okay. So then we got to talking a couple of days later and uh, I asked her if she'd figured anything out. She said, no, and my husband and I talked and he sat there and he said, well, let's lend them the money and try to help them get to where they don't lose the house. So at that time, that's what we did. I cut a check or I actually called her mortgage company and uh, they took a $2,258 payment out of my bank. And then I wrote her a personal check for 242 so she can either pay the electric, the electric bill or okay. get groceries, whatever she needed. Then a couple days later, her husband came over and asked to borrow $100. So that came up to a total of $2,600 to mm -hmm. date. 272 has been paid back. But the biggie is the saving the home. How much was that again? Um, that was $2,258. Yeah, very kind of you. All right, and it only happened once, hopefully. Yes, you only yes, had sir. To, okay. So when you wasn't like me. What happened to you? No. I got a couple of people, they come to me every year or every six months <laughs> to save their house. Says, I'm about to lose my house. I'm about to lose my house. You need to get an apartment. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> you don't do well with house notes. All right, good. Ma'am, what do you say to this? She did let us borrow the money. I told her at the time, I don't know when or if I'll ever be able to pay you back. So... I couldn't keep up with my house payments. What's your defense to paying it today? Well, whenever I had a little bit of cash, I'd have paid her back whenever I could. So you intend to? As I can, yes, sir. All right, so that means you're agreeing that you owe. So that's good, see? We don't have to break up the friendship. <laughs> you just have to get her on an accelerated payment plan. <laughs> there you go. And your counterclaim, $1,660 for animal care. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. Well, we've watched their animals like, when they've gone out of town or had to go to the doctor's office. We've uh, figured twice a month, $10 an hour. Twice for, a month. For 83 months. Twice so, a month for three months, and that equals $1,600? No, sir. That's, no, Your Honor, okay. 83 months over, from 2008. To? When they travel. Or go out, go to the doctor in Birmingham. So when they travel, that means you charge them just for the day or for the 24 average, hour? No, two times a day, $10 an hour. It's been more times than that, but just on average, $1,660. All right, did she, when they were going out of town, did they agree to pay you? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you just kind of figured. You just figured, oh, I think I just need to be paid. <laughs> just dawned on me. Enough I think I should have been getting paid for this. <laughs> so when you told her that, what did they say? 
She says she thinks it's underhanded. What do you say to this? What I say to this is over the same amount of years, we have also watched their animals and their house when anytime her husband was in the hospital, anytime. So we have done this in kind. There was never any monies attached to our, it was love and friendship. And I've got to admit, one time in 2014, I did go away for two weeks. And I felt that that was an, a long time to ask somebody to keep coming over. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I did offer, because I was paying the young mm -hmm. man that stayed at my house, 75, he was there 16 hours a day. I paid him 75 a week to stay there at the house and watch the animals. Mm -hmm. So I asked them if they would accept $50 a week over those two week period time, and they said yes. That was and up front. Yes, and I deducted that from what they owed. But that was an agreement up front, as you say. Right, that was, was an agreement up front. Were there any other agreements up front? No, sir, All right, never were any Were there months. any other agreements up front? No. All right, what type of dogs do you have? I have a Cocker Poo, a Cocker Spaniel, and a Yorkie Palm, and four cats. Wow. Okay. And she has two pits. <laughs> I don't. My husband does. And you want somebody to pay you for watching a <laughs> terrier, and you watch, and you have no. them watching Pit Bull. <laughs> and the whole house them. shook. <laughs> The cats and the little dogs can't come out their room when your pit bull's are over there? I don't fool They probably don't come out of the room. What you all do? You crack your door open, you slide the food out, and her no. dogs get the run of your house. No, we, we live right across the street from each other, so we just walk back and forth across the street to watch. And her one dog, Cindy, I've known her. She's had several litters. She loves me, but right. the big boy, I kind of scared of him. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on the other hand, you should also be scared of that terrier, though. She has the right to be scared of I know that little terrier snaps and barks at everybody, doesn't it? What? The, the, the Yorkie little terrier. Palm? Yeah, the Yorkie the, yeah, Yorkie. He's yappy, but as soon as you sit down, he's all on your lap. Uh, uh, we have a Yorkie, and uh, that little dog thinks that he's bigger than he is. Yeah. 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 He snaps at all the other dogs who have five five times his size and talks crazy to me. <laughs> Jumps in your seat when you get up and dare you to try and move him when you come back. No, but there was no agreement up front in order to um, enforce any services. There must be an agreement for those services. You can't wait and determine that you should be paid. So I'm going to have to grant her judgment. You agree that you owe. And $2,328 is your judgment, and your claim must be dismissed. Good luck to you, ladies. Now you have your friendship back. Have a good Thank day. You. Thank you. Thank you. Can we be friends again? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I love you, Cuz. I love you, too. We're going to go back to being Thelma and Louise. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to roll tight. Oh, oh. <laughs> Give me a hug. Plaintiff Kiara Reeves says the defendant is her cousin, and she does not like the defendant's boyfriend. Kiara claims the defendant's boyfriend partied the rent money away, and as a result, they were evicted, and the defendant had to move in with Kiara. Kiara is suing her cousin for loans, rent, and stolen property. Defendant Mariana Brown says she has no idea why Kiara doesn't like her boyfriend. And the reason she moved out is because Kiara lied about catching Mariana and her boyfriend having sex in her home. She's countersuing for breach of contract. Start with you. Uh, well, me and Mariana are cousins, uh, more like sisters. We grew up together, and we used to do everything together up until about two years ago. She started dating this guy. He's a nobody who swears he's somebody. Um, <laughs> very, very irresponsible, uh, partying, having parties, throwing parties like he's Jay-Z or Kanye West. He's a promoter? Like no, he's not a promoter. He just oh. goes out and has parties, and he... Does he make money off of them? No. Oh. He's just throwing the parties just for fun. Okay. Um, and he even got my cousin evicted. Um, what does with, he do for a living? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Probably nothing. <laughs> well, he has to do something if he's out of the club balling. Well, he's balling with money that's supposed to be going on bills like her money. Okay. Not his. He doesn't mm -hmm. do anything. 
Um, he got her evicted. Uh, she came to stay with me. Um, and up until one day I caught her and him having sex in my room. And at that point, I told her she had to go. Um, I gave her 30 days to leave. She left in the middle of the 30 days with some of my belongings. All right. Let me allow her to give some background now. Kiara is my cousin. Um, we were very close before this. We used to go on family vacations and stuff. Kiara loves to sing, so we would get together and cook, and Kiara would be my personal radio. Um, she dislikes my boyfriend for some reason. I have no clue at all. Does he work? But, yes, he okay. does construction. All right. Did Kiara, you get evicted? Yes. Why did you get evicted then? If he works and works construction, that's a very that's a high paying job. She says because he's popping off the money at the clubs, balling out. Um, I mean, he honestly he was a character, but that has. What happened to the money? That <laughs> does have something to do with you being evicted, having to move over there with her. What happened to the money? He thought it was extra money in the account, so he spent it. And it wasn't extra money, it was rent money. Exactly. Was he going out to the clubs regularly? Yes. And then when it came time to pay rent and you all were getting evicted, he said, well, I thought this was extra money. <laughs> Go ahead. What else you want me to know? Well, she came up with this story that she called us having sex in her house, which was not true. So one day while she was at work, I just moved out because I didn't want to deal with all her craziness. So. How long did you live there? Six months. Were you to pay rent? No. Why? What? That's why you got put out the last one because you wasn't paying <laughs> well, rent. We you put it... her out? Yes, I yeah, did. Yeah, because you wouldn't pay there either. Why won't you pay your rent? Well, we made an agreement that I was to babysit her kids for her, her daughter for her, excuse me, and that would be my rent. Okay. How many hours a week? I babysit it. Well, I'm not, I can't then calculate it, but I babysit them from five days a week, 10 hours a day. She worked, she worked nine hours, but it takes her time to get home, and I still had to keep them from the time she left to go okay. to work and the time she made it home. So let's get to the loans and the rent and the stolen property, and then we'll discuss that rent, which sounds reasonable if she's telling the truth. No, she is not. All right, you tell me. <laughs> um, okay, well, March, thir March of 2014, that's when the first loan, I gave her the first loan of $2,000 for her to pay the bills, and that's the money that he took. And pay the bills at the place they were evicted from. Yeah, because I, I gave her the $2,000 so that she wouldn't get evicted. And he used that money uh, for a weekend of partying. Ma'am, what happened to the $2,000? He, that's the money he said he thought was the extra money in the account. What about the other money that he earned that well, you all would typically pay the rent with? We were behind on bills because I wasn't working at the time, so that's why we were on the verge of getting evicted and stuff. I, okay. had, I just got you had a job. Lost in July. The job. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Right. So she called me in April the next month of 2014 um, and let me know what happened. At that time, she told me that she broke up with the boyfriend um, and she, you know, she needed somewhere to stay. So I did agree to let her move in with me. I gave her another $500 loan to move her stuff to a storage unit and to bring some of the stuff to my house for her to stay with me temporarily. Um, at the time, I told her that it was in my lease. I had to pay $75 per person if someone came to live with me. Her and her son came, so she agreed to pay $150 a month in rent. She stayed with me for six months, and she never paid any of it. I never agreed to let her use the rent from her watching my daughter because she didn't watch her five days a week. It was more like two to three days. How old was your daughter? She was two at the time. Who watched the daughter then? Uh, Mariana did. She did watch my daughter sometimes. I know. Who, I who watched her the other days? Uh, my dad. He lived there? No, he, I took her to my dad's house. Okay. You know of anything about her dad? No, she, she did not Is take Is he retired or something? No, he's not retired. He just wasn't working at the time. She was keeping her two to three days a week. The other time, my dad was. All right. How many hours a day? She was keeping her about eight to ten hours. A day. Mm -hmm. And rent. Uh, she That's was... a good deal you got going. Get babysitting there and rent. The, the babysitting was just a favor because of everything that I was doing for her. I never, we never agreed. What were you doing for her? Because she agreed to repay it as $2,500, so you weren't doing that for her. What were you doing for her exactly? I mean, I, I allowed her to live with me. I was paying Yeah, for 150 else. a month. It's, so what were you doing for her? I mean, I, I was buying the food, the tissue, the... Tissue? Call the tissue. Okay. Everything. That's what you did. So, your 30 hours of babysitting, you already been compensated. 
Can toilet paper. Did you get your toilet paper? <laughs> that's that's. I told you what you got. That was my point. I don't know how tissue. she expect. How would she expect me to Did pay you rent? Get your tissue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that was your payment. <laughs> What stolen property, ma'am? Well, when she left, um, it, there was a couple of things missing, but um, the three most valuable things were two Michael Kors purses and a Michael Kors watch. Okay, how do you attribute it to her? Well, when she left, she took it. All and right. I called her, I let her know that the stuff was missing. She did acknowledge that it was missing. She told me that her boyfriend must have took it because he thought it was theirs. They left. No, that is false. You never discussed those items with her? No. Never? This never. is the first you're hearing of it? No, she's been texting me about so it. So then you have discussed it with her? No, I haven't discussed it with her. I told her when she... You just told me she's been texting you I about mean, it. And yes, you just but... said, I told her. That means you have discussed it with her. Okay, well, I've discussed it with her, but I did not take it. I told her that I did not take it, and I don't know what she's talking did about. Did you mention your boyfriend? No, me and him were not seeing each other Did you all. mention that your boyfriend may have taken it? No. All right. The way you evaded that question, I believe her on the stolen property. The stolen property is how much? $700. $700. And ma'am, I'm not going to grant you any rent. I believe the rent was in exchange for her keeping the child for 30 hours a week. And that's what you want the 900 for the babysitting. But instead, you're going to have that deducted from the amount she's suing you for. So $2,500 and $700 is what, Doyle? 3200 3200 and that's your judgment, and yours is dismissed. Good luck, ladies. Have a good day. Mariana. I, I still want to be your best friend. I just think you need to get it together. Leave him alone. Like, it's not... <laughs> Kiara, I did leave him alone, and you know that. You over-exaggerated this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Okay, all right. Really, tissue, though? It wasn't just so you didn't tell, so I only watched Jada three days a week. Yes, you did not watch her four to five days a week. You, Kiara, I even watched her when you wanted to go out and all type of stuff. Because I, you I said Jada. you weren't doing anything. But it how wasn't... did you expect me to get a job and pay you rent if I'm at home babysitting Jada? Plaintiff Dina Lark says the defendant is her son, and she claims he is extremely irresponsible. Dina claims the defendant can't hold down a job, and whenever he does get money, he spends it at the strip club. Dina claims she took out a loan for the defendant and he failed to pay it off, so she's suing. Defendant Adrian Borges says Dina acts like a mother to everyone and all of his friends go to Dina for advice. Adrian admits that he did have problems keeping a job, but now he's on his feet and has a good one. Adrian says he never agreed to pay off the loan. Start with you. Okay, I want to give you a little background on him. I've went as far as to nicknaming him Ratchet Romeo. Okay, uh, Terminator's another one. He wrecks his cars within a week or a month. He's went through three in two years. Wow. Yes. Do, uh, um, and all three wrecked? Smashed. He's drove one with the butt end in the back seat. Now this one, the door's in the almost Who's the middle council. Never his, of course. And then... Okay, he's got the Terminator, he's got Ratchet Romeo. Ratchet uh, means kind of low The redder the hair, the wilder the girl, and he's on it. Within a hundred yards, they'll find him or he'll find them. <laughs> right. he, he goes through jobs like I go through underwear. That's another Terminator name for him. Terminated okay, all the time. <laughs> okay, yes. And when he does get a little money through his temp jobs, it's always to the strip clubs. Then I try to give him tough love. I put him out two months ago, but unfortunately I live next door to my parents, so there he goes next door. <laughs> Grandfather wants to give him money for the strip club. He even went as far as to making sure he's got single and changes on Thursday, because Thursday's strip club day, and I call that Thirsty Thursday, because he cannot wait till Thursday comes around. To how old are you? 25. Time to get responsible. All right, and... How far did he go in school, a trade school? Uh, yeah, I got my associate's degree. Okay, good. When? In 2012. All I graduated right. in March. All right, and you been able to hold down a job? Uh, no, I've I been struggling holding it down, but I got a good one now, Yana. Okay. I'm a machine operator now. I'm working on being You ever been engineer. convicted of a crime? Nope. On drugs? Sold drugs? None of that? 
<laughs> just irresponsible and pampered and lazy and time I for him to get some that, responsibilities. The hormones been going, they're already gone, so now time to grow yeah. up. Sounds like he hasn't matured fully. Mm -hmm. uh, if what you say is true, mm -hmm. he hasn't matured fully with regard to responsibility and um, there's uh, a balance you have to strike sometimes because I'm impressed that he has an education and a skill mm -hmm. and has not been in uh, any real trouble, uh, which in this day and age for a young man. It's a blessing. Um, yeah, it's a blessing. All right, so, you know, you cut the man a break. You tell mm -hmm. me some more about yourself. <laughs> well, first of all, Yana, I'd like to say it's nice to meet you finally. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've never been excited to see a judge in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Good to go. Good. Good. But uh, this this mama Diana, she neighborhood mama. Everybody come to her for advice, and uh, it's either you get taken care of or kicked out, <laughs> beat up or taken good care of. You know. She don't beat them up. What do you oh, mean sometimes. beat them up? Figuratively, not. Well, it depends on the situation, Yana. <laughs> <laughs> It's came to that sometimes, but um, I mean, she didn't chase me down and hunted me down. If I can explain a Terminator situation. Go ahead. Well, uh, I'm not really the Terminator. It's it's just my friends say it looks like the Terminator's chasing me because it looks like the Terminator's happen? chasing me. How does that? Uh, Three in one year. What happened? Well, the 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 first accident a couple years ago, I was just crossing a residential neighborhood and the lady pulled off from the stop sign and flipped me around a little bit. Only one was really my fault. The second one, I was getting on the expressway and somebody rear-ended me speeding in the right lane. But the last one, it was my fault. I jumped into traffic and got it pretty good. All right, let me ask this. Are you the only child or the youngest yes, child? Only, only child. Only child. All right. That's part of it, ma'am. The youngest uh, and, or the only child, that's what they come to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what you have here in addition to immaturity. He's... Um, Accustomed to Get mama and he wants grandparents kind of giving him what he wants. Mm -hmm. uh, not having as much responsibility, perhaps. I'm just surmising. I don't know. Right. That's very common mm -hmm. among the youngest or the only child. Um, Wait a second. Weren't you the baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> Everything I want. <laughs> but it, whatever I didn't get. Uh, that I wanted, I'd take it. No, <laughs> just kidding. Well, look at you now. <laughs> that was probably the problem. <laughs> All right, so what's the breach of contract you're suing him okay, for? Okay, I found out a month before he was to graduate that he wasn't going to graduate because he failed that one class. And he'd already exhausted his student loans. So I had to go get a student loan, a loan. For one class? For one class, so he could finish the semester and graduate and get his associate's degree. There was one course he failed that he needed to graduate. It didn't cost $2,000. That's what they charged me, $3,500. For one, no, for one semester. Well, he can explain probably that part better. All I know is they took me and they got a loan in my name. Give me an understanding of how well, one uh, course it was a cost $2,000. It was a couple courses. Um, well, a couple of courses I, cost I mean, I, I would fail one class, and they would have to put me in that one class again, and that would mess up my uh, probably, next class. Probably, what, $300? Yeah, uh, about 400 and something. Right, right. $400 hour. for a class. Yeah. And, Another and, class, 400 that's 800 How do we get to 2000 well, it was, it was maybe three, three classes. I don't know how they, <laughs> I, I don't know how they got Your to Your Honor, that that's what I mean about Ratchet. He was more worried about the girls than the classes, and I was I finding out later. How many needed? All I, I know, know is they took my, wanted to know my taxes and gave me a loan for $3,500, and now it's went up to 41. I've been paying on it three years. He's not giving me a nickel, and I still probably got a couple more years. I have it so right here. So the loan wasn't 2000 it was 3500 To begin with, it's... For those so-called one, two, or even three yeah. courses. Mm-hmm. So he took the 3500 of course, and partied it off, paid the 1000 toward <laughs> the classes, and took the 2500 and got all those cards that he read. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. So you obtained a loan for him, and obviously he agreed to pay you. Is that yes. what you're saying? And he has it. Sir, yeah. what do you want to tell me? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say all that. Um, <laughs> I... Come on, now. Don't start coming across as pitiful. What? Speak <laughs> up. 
Well, um, I, I have failed a couple courses, and they told me I wasn't able to get no more loans, that I would have to go to somebody else or pay cash, and I didn't have the cash. So I asked my mother if she helped me finish out my education, and that was it. I, I asked her. The, the, the school was calling and trying to figure out how to get her tax information. And Did she tell you a pair? Mm, no, I mean, no. Uh, Pat, here, I have a letter. Do you want a letter from no, his grandfather? No, he come across so pitiful, I believe he did. <laughs> you need to be, you need to man up a little, sir. I mean, you're not being babied anymore. You're 25. Baby days Amen. are over. They're over. And I wouldn't advise to necessarily put him out, but I would cut off everything other than uh, a roof over his head. Well, that's what I do, and then he jumps the fence and goes to grandma and grandpa. Wow. <laughs> just, I, I'm I, sorry. I don't I, know what to say about you, I have to you, move. Man. I have to move. I, don't know I have to, to move, then put him out. <laughs> Judgment for the plaintiff. It is clear that you believed you owe or you agreed to repay. You hemmed and hawed so much that <laughs> I certainly am convinced. Give him a roof over his head. Always, and that's about Your it. Honor. Don't give him another dime. That's what Nothing. I told him. I give him roof, no food, gas clean money, clothes. no singles for the strip club. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, All okay. right, just for Thank the you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Never stop loving my mother. And that's my only son. Love him to death with all my heart. Plaintiff James Sturkey is in a band, and he hired the defendant to shoot a promotional video. James claims it took the defendant a month to get him the edited video, and he was unhappy because the band members' names were misspelled and the audio was bad and he has the video in court today. He's suing to get his money back. Defendant Michelle Lee says she's a well-known videographer and does a lot of work in her community. Michelle insists she did a good job for James and she's countersuing because she claims he defamed her company on the internet. All right, start with you. Uh, Miss Lee was hired by myself and my band, Esau Band, to do a video of a performance that we were doing December 12th. Uh, 2014 in one of our local Harlem clubs. Uh, the video was for the purpose of promotion. Uh, we were to get the finished pretty, uh, product and then we also had venues who were waiting for the product in order for us to enhance our performances and be able to, to do those two venues. Uh, when we got the finished product, which was beyond the time that we were told we would get it, it was, if I might say, crap. Uh, was not worthy of being sent anywhere, thus we lost the two jobs and we also could not post, post those videos on Facebook with our fans. Those two jobs were dependent on the time frame in which she was to complete the video? That's correct, Your Honor. I had told her I needed it in a timely manner. How long uh, did it take? Well, she indicated to me initially that it was going to take one week for us to get a tape that we could review. Okay. Uh, after the week, I got no call. I had to do a follow-up call to her. At that point, I got a very irate and nasty response from Ms. Lee indicating that she was busy doing other projects and that our tape wasn't ready. How long uh, did it ultimately take? Uh, we didn't get the tape until January the 16th. So a little over a month? Yes, sir. Ma'am? Your Honor, I'm known in the community and I do a lot of videotaping for many people. Matter of fact, I mean, I don't charge, you know, for everyone, for everything, something like that. That's just to show what I do, is to show the positive things that goes on in the community. So tell me about your um, um, business dealings with the plaintiff. Uh, we, have, we have a mutual friend. I was called at the last minute. She called me, she said, hey, I have a friend. And matter of fact, I was under the impression I was going to videotape a female singer. Uh, that's his witness here. So when I approached her, she said, oh, you're filming the band and this gentleman is gonna pay you. I said, okay. So being that he and I had never spoken before, she and I had never spoken before. There was, I was only going on the goodwill of uh, the mutual friend to do this. So I brought my receipt book, because we didn't have time to do a contract, so I don't know what they wanted. So I brought my receipt book. I asked when I was finally introduced to the plaintiff, he said, well, how much do you cost? I said, I could do one hour of video footage for $150. He said, okay. I said, now when I finish videotaping, what do you want done with the material? Do you want me to edit it for you or do you want to take the tape and have someone edit it for you? He said, well, I'd like you to do it. 
I said, okay. I said, well, this is how we're going to do this. I will I'm video sorry, Your Honor. Let her finish. I will videotape for one whole hour of your band, and I will edit it, you know, uh, edit it for you, put transformation on it, just make it look nice for you to promote your, your band. So I videotaped for one hour of them singing, they performing. After we was done, as far as I know, that was it. He said, how long would it take? I said, probably take maybe one or two weeks. I said, number one, I have other pending videos before yours because I was called at the last minute. So I have to finish other projects before I get to yours. He never gave me a date when he needed this. On this receipt, it never says a time limit How long on did you take, ma'am? Um, the, the first one probably finished towards the end of December. I, I called him and asked, I can't give you the exact date, but I called him as I said, well, do you want to look at it first on my laptop before I brought it to a DVD? He says, no, I want you to go ahead and do it, I need it right now. That's mm -hmm. what he kept saying. So it was like, okay, well. So right we, now turned into how long? How long it took me to edit it, which sometimes takes hours. So when I burned it, I called him, I said, your DVD is ready. Mm -hmm. So he said, bring it to me. So How long? After December 12th, did you do that? Probably like, it was going into the new year because I had other things on my computer. I couldn't get them off because I had a complete, I had a wedding. I had a complete. That takes even longer. That takes days to do it because a lot and of He never told there. you how soon he needed it. No, he never gave me a position. And you day. never had any presumption of how long it might take? Not exactly. Okay, not so just... you could have given it to him six months later. Probably, yes. A year? Yes. Okay. So, I see the problem. <laughs> All right. Okay. She thought she can give it to you when she want to. No. Six months? <laughs> a year? That's true. That's you got right. other things to do. Exactly. That's what you said. And, 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 and I would, you know, I'd like to correct it. First and foremost, I didn't set up any time in terms of, or, or even process in terms of what she's doing. She's, she says she's a professional. I leave that to the professionals. The bottom line was is that I told her that we needed this as, as a promotional as tool and we needed it as soon as possible. When you did get it, what was the quality like? It was poor quality. As a matter of fact, we have the tape here, sir. What was poor about it? First of all, the sound was poor. The first shooting of the performance, we couldn't hear a thing. Nothing. Sound? Um, what sound else? was bad. Uh, if you like the shots of backs of heads, if you like the shots of sides of faces, <laughs> all of that was there. And the bottom line was also, at, with respect to the name of the band, we gave band names, band member names, singers' names. I even sent her emails, which I have copies of, indicating how you spell the person's last name so there would be no problem. That was misspelled. And at the end of the tape, where it was supposed to show the contact information, wherever she got this contact information, I don't know, but it wasn't what I sent her. <laughs> Let's see what you have. Let's see. We were doing a review. That's where my partner, uh, Erica, comes Is in. Is that how you spell? No, that ain't how you spell no Michael. You don't no spell Michael that way. That's not Michael. That's me equal. So, <laughs> Spellman, Spellman has no E in between the L and the M. That information was clear. She got all of those emails. That's not even the email I gave her. My sir, email that I gave her sir, this for DVD the email that I gave her for contact, that, Your Honor, this is was not the DVD Stirk that we got. Okay, you have it. Secondly, he did not... No, 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 no. Let's yeah. stop there. You said, this is not the DVD. No, no, I mean... No, no, listen. I heard what you said. You said, this is not the DVD. So let me be clear. You did not prepare and give this DVD to him? Yes, but... Okay, well, it is the DVD <laughs> that he received. We got to consider what he needed, not what you have. That's for you. And then secondly... That's for you and your business. For his business, he needs the proper contact, else he makes no money. Exactly, sir. All right, ma'am, that was terrible. <laughs> and did he ever ask for his money back? Yes, he did. What did you tell him? I said I would give him half back. He could take the tape, the recorded tape, wall footage I have. That's a lie, have that edited. That's a lie. That was the phone conversation Did you give him anything back? No, I, I kept wanting to give him the You the, didn't the, give him his money back. Good it. enough. Your counterclaim, uh, ma'am, is for what? $1,000. Okay, well, he went on to Facebook, defaming my name, personally uh, mentioned my name and also my video. He began to say, beware, beware to my friends and family on Facebook. I wish to warn you of a rip-off artist operated under the disguise or skies. I can't understand the word he says here, a professional. He, he called me like, a, like I'm a villain. Mm -hmm. When I offered him many times to make the correction, he said he didn't want corrections or he said he wanted, he, or he wanted the correction done immediately. Mm -hmm. I said, I would do that. I had no problem with doing that. I said, how do you allow me to mm -hmm. do that? Then probably And like here. you said, you took a month. 
Okay, but he said, uh, perpetrating the uh, behavior is the attitude that illustrates the others say about dealing with black businesses, they will lie and steal from you. I feel that's not what I did. And I, I'm not perpetrating a, a black person that does bad business or have a bad attitude. Um, he said, you I have do do bad business. With that one, <laughs> with that one, you did bad business. I'll say with that one. I don't know how you typically do. With that one, you did bad business, ma'am. Let me see what you're reading from. And if I might interject, Your Honor, mm -hmm. at the point when I had initially asked for the $150 back was two weeks into it because she told me she was so busy. I said, well, if you can't give me a product, give me back my money. Her exact words to me was, I'm not giving you no $150 back. And your slander is that he said you were a bad businesswoman, and that's his experience with you, and that's his opinion. Opinions mm -hmm. aren't slander. Slander is when you make up something with the intent of hurting a person, and the result is that you do hurt their reputation. He's not making this up. You did do bad business with him, and that gave him the opinion that you're a bad businesswoman. Judgment for the plaintiff, $750. Ma'am, your claim is dismissed. It's not slander. Have a good day. Thank you. Just, if you could not give me a, a product that was going to help me and assist me in terms of what I had to do with myself and my band, then give me my money back. That could have been done after two weeks. Mr. Starkey here is a bully. He, he did not portray himself as being the good person that he, that he did in the court today. Um, I did the best that I could, and I know I do the best work that I can do, and I know I do very good work.